Thank you, Jennifer. That, that was um, wonderful. I'm going to draw one or two headlines from the day. Um, and obviously, I've had to rewrite a few, um, just as you did at lunchtime. <laughs> but some of the things, there was this element that, the, although we're academicians and some of the people in the room are even academics too, we're not dealing with growth that's abstract. This is trying to, although, although there's a concept of the arc it, as a broad spatial phenomenon, it's not actually a planning construct, but we are having to deal with real growth. And that's a huge scale of growth, just as we've seen from the other exemplars in um, what we've heard from Toronto and, and Rotterdam. But it's a huge scale here in the communities all across this part of the um, south central or, or however we want to describe this, this part of England. It's not just about architecture and design, but that is important. The feeling was in, in the presentations, that's integral, it's a key building block, but it's also about the green and blue networks as well, both at an intricate local level, but also the strategic networks uh, of green and blue. Critical coming through this morning was the role of innovation, and we saw a lot uh, of the examples from Rotterdam in particular, but not only that, it crept into the afternoon too, the diversity of tenure and, and the importance of improving environmental performance. We, we heard um, about the, Julia in particular cited the depletion of planning resources as a problem. The system isn't right, the skills, the capability, the level, the confidence, um, and even the leverage and power of those in the system isn't what it used to be and isn't necessarily de delivering the results we need. Livability uh, was cited by Noah and, and others later for a whole range of people, understanding the people, the demographics, uh, families, places for young people to play, for instance, the, this informality and, 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 and uh, family space, but also places uh, that worked buildings and spaces for older people, including those who may be affected by dementia. There was a tension and a debate throughout the day. It continued into the afternoon about rules and certainty that they provide uh, versus discretion and flexibility and, and, and what that may allow, but also sometimes what it may unpick versus the idea of we heard uh, of a simple code. The fantastic presentation by um, David Rudlin on looking at figure grounds and so on, scalable plans and master plans, helped us think about the walkable neighborhood at one level to the city region and actually several scale, scaling up uh, levels in between that. The inclusive collaborative leadership, which I think uh, I would say Jennifer continued in, into her presentation this afternoon. It's not an old style top down civic leadership. It's inclusive and enabling and facilitating. And that includes the role, uh, as we heard from Alex, around master developers. When we have developers working within that system, it's not the old style developer house builder just saying, this is what you're going to get. And, and we really enjoyed some of the, the metaphors um, that, that we got um, in the exposition of what might happen in the West Midlands, because there's a, there's a lot still to happen, uh, and uh, we, we really enjoy the idea of a field guide uh, as a, not, I don't mean that as a route map, but it's ways of looking at things um, in, in terms of uh, being rooted in the real place. This afternoon, we were reminded that we've actually got to accommodate the equivalent of eight times Milton Keynes, which is already fairly substantial in this part of the world, and that we can't do it just by developers or allocations in the old style of large development opportunities by the development corporation. We need to include co-design, uh, community-led design, co-production, and the psychological as well as the physical and financial investment in place. So again, that seemed to be a big issue that, that was uh, repeated in Jennifer's presentation. A creative approach to value and finance seemed to be one of the ways if not several ways, of unlocking that. So it wasn't instead of finance, but creative approaches. So those of you who've got colleagues who are good at that economic dimension, uh, we, we had some interesting discussions. I think Peter Kuznin was explaining yesterday on site some of the ways different things were approached in order to unlock solutions, often by co-production and sharing risk between different parties. So really what we're dealing is something that, that has to address the change in climate situation, aim for uh, zero carbon, that's the new benchmark, the new normal that's being aimed for, incorporate the circular economy, address not only the climate emergency, but the consumption crisis, as we heard in the, in the Pecha Kucha sessions. So there are all sorts of practical things advising uh, around less car space, more makes more community space available. Yes, we can use modern methods as well as perhaps some or parts of traditional and give more choice, give people the opportunity to influence 
influence uh, model or, 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 or at little taster stage. There was a, a worry that some of us had uh, yesterday in terms of a discussion about range of types and choice. And, and the issue is don't make everything the same and give people no choice, but you can give them a, a limited range of choice and some flexibility. So you can have repetition and choice and variation. A lot of it's about the way that that's put together. Um, that hopefully would lead to a new kind of urbanism in terms of outputs, as we heard towards the end of the Pecha Kucha sessions. And the aspiration, I think, uh, some of us talked about it in the break, is we want to leave a positive impact on the city. This is not just about projects, it's about what we pass on for those who are going to continue to live there, uh, perhaps long after we're gone. And uh, uh, towards the end, I interpreted from that that their sustainability guidance could be used, and maybe even we should be looking, I think Derek suggested it to me in the break, for some kind of joint statement about what our aspiration level should be. That's where we got to it was augmented by those fantastic stories um, from Jennifer, including we need to create a place that ticks all the boxes. It's not just about meeting one or two criteria. It's got to be bigger than that. And we've got to build the consensus around the drivers of change. People not, may not agree in every last detail, but if they agree on the principles and the direction of change, we can build a huge consensus. So I think we've covered an enormous amount of ground. I, I'm not entirely sure how we write it up and record it. It's been suggested we try and encapsulate it in some kind of direction. But I think you've done fantastically well kind of as, as a discourse backwards and forwards all through today. Before we conclude, uh, there's just a, a, an item of business that Jazz has got to, to present to us and explain. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll make the final thanks at the end.